Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you guys doing out there? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Bam is the way. What's going on, guys? It is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, and I am coming at you. Coming at you. Coming at you hard from the Wizard's Tower. And I want to welcome one. Welcome all. Welcome you. Welcome you. What are you doing here? Why, why are you still? Oh, never. You know what? Just sit down. Just sit down. Be cool. And I want to welcome you guys all here to the game gallery. Look, I got my dice happening behind me. Ooh, got my dice happening behind me. Got myself all framed up exactly how I want to be framed up a little bit. And again, um, I know, I know part of me is phasing in and out. It's all part of the magic spell. And um, yeah, this is the show. This is the show where we talk about games um, in the sense of what game do we feature? What do we look at? And what can I tell you guys about this game that you guys haven't already heard of? And then I think back to something that Stan Lee all like said, um, God, I think it was like 40 years ago. Um, as you guys know, Stan Lee, Stan the man, the guy that does all the cameos or did all the cameos in all the Avengers movies, um, known for his long, long, long career in comic books, creating Spider-Man and working with the King, Jack the King Kirby, and making Fantastic Four and the X-Men and every comic book character you've ever heard of um, or you've actually grew up with and had some sort of connection to, except for, you know, a lot of the ones at DC, but it if it it was from Marvel it was probably created by Stan Lee because that's what he was doing um, and he said I think it was 20 years and working in Marvel I think yeah I think it was back in the 80s because um, he had been with the company since before it was Marvel Comics and he said every comic is somebody's first and I love that I love that idea Every single comic book that's ever written is someone's first comic. Just like every game that we talk about out here will be someone's very first game. And this is why we are here to talk to people saying, hey, what's going on? Does this look interesting? Blah, blah, blah. Maybe it'll be their gateway. Maybe it won't. Maybe there's a lot of people that have been playing these things for as long as I have or longer. Because, well... Um, none of this is new. What is going on? What's 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 going on? Um, so that is what we are at today. So today we are going to be talking boo 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 about the classic, the classic, the number one, um, the first RPG that really made a splash onto the world. Um, and I want to address a whole bunch of stuff specifically. I know I talk about this a lot, but we are going to get into it today. And what I mean, this, it, all that stuff, I'm talking about, I'm talking like people I know. Yeah, I know I talk about it and this and that and all that stuff. No, we're going to get into satanic panic. And I am hoping to remedy the panic with a few people by showing you guys what actually happens. All right. But before I do this, I'm going to, I got to get some business going got to do the whole thing get these bills paid and all that jazz so if you guys want to join the discussion um ask me questions all that other stuff you guys can either show up over here in np city what's up np city what's going on deck mob yeah woohoo yeah what is going on and um and you guys can ask me a question via um via the chat because i'm here i'm keeping an eye on you guys just to make sure that you guys watch your language and um you can always pull up a keyboard yeah pull up a keyboard and type in well pull up a keyboard first open up email second and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. That's B A C K I N G or I N T H E D E C K as back in the deck not back in the day, back in the deck, um, at gmail.com, and I can read your email, I got my phone sitting right in front of me, as a matter of fact, if you want me to read it on the air, I'll do that, just put so in the um, subject bar somewhere in the, you know, CC thing, and all that, stuff. somewhere in the subject line, also check us out on the social medias, um, Twitter, Instagram, 
um, if you guys like what we're doing and checking that stuff out subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe share hit the bell do all that stuff or you can head on over to soundcloud um listen to our stuff i would prefer it if you do that but the audio for our stuff can be found anywhere you can find your anywhere that you can find your podcast uh we're on spotify now we're on spotify and apple tv and uh, our apple um apple tunes and all that other stuff all that all those places that you can listen to to um um you know podcasts we're there now been working really hard to make it so that we're there and of course um you know if you are part of that wretched hive of scum and villainy known as facebook head on over to deckers on the book and join our discussions meet a few of our other deckers there and um yeah do that whole thing now personally i need to stay away from facebook for a little while but i get all the deckers on the book notifications on my little phone so there you go and um so if you guys say something or you guys be like solar blah 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 and deckers on the book i'll be able to answer you without looking through my timeline ah so um and if you think that what we do here is cooler than a coffee refill ah if our stuff is more refreshing and more enjoyable than a refill of coffee a month then just head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a ducker become a decker for just a buck what's a buck it's a dollar a month come on y'all lose more more in that um uh, more than that in change every month and you get access to all of our archives and you really help us out we send we send um prizes and um incentives for the people that are in the higher tiers um five dollars would be more than appreciated and of course if you are no you are not late boom chicka boom i was just about to mention you if you decide that you can actually spare the cash i know this is a hard time in our particular culture right now but if you can actually afford to do it then all you gotta do is sign up on our royalty tier like queen shannon boom boom lay his majesty paul mansfield and of course our ace in the hole jennifer crow and um you guys will help keep the lights on because you know we need money to make this stuff go and i thought about putting up a big paywall i tried making the website a um subscription based website but i ain't that popular so like share get more people down here um have more people watch us all that other jazz and that would really help us out a whole lot toward building the community and making stuff um work really good for a lot of us and i am again i'm super grateful super thankful for you guys that are here anyhow um so today 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 we are going to focus on the granddaddy the number one thing the big boy the big boy the big doom the one that's out there do 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 dungeons and dragons the player's handbook Blah. <laughs> all that other stuff i would add foley but i just don't feel like it um we talk about a lot of role-playing games here and i looked over our archive because i'm uploading a whole bunch of stuff now that i actually have the time um with the quarantine and all that stuff and i realized that i've talked about stuff that was based on DD. i've talked about the um I've talked about the influences that D&D has had. We've talked about miniatures games that were based on D&D, video games that are based on, on D&D. We've talked about other skins of D&D like Esper Genesis and, and Midnight. And, and we've talked about a lot of stuff. We ain't talked about D&D. We ain't talked about the number one thing, the direct thing. You know, we ain't, we ain't talked about the thing that all that started this whole mess. So I wanted to get to it. Just a little bit of back history. Dungeons and Dragons was started in the 1970s by a gentleman by the name of Gary Gygax. Um, he and his friends were sitting around and they loved playing miniatures games that were based on historical reenactments. Now, these were some of the first ways to play with miniatures, or as I like to call them, toys. It's one of the first ways 
to organize play with toys. I like toys. Rrr, I'm a monster toy. Ah. And um, and they wanted to do more stuff that was based on fantasy novels, specifically Lord of the Rings. So um, they have their little figures, their little toys, their little, their their tiny little dolls, their little dolls about the size of a silver dollar. Um, and they played things like the Battle of Waterloo. Um, you know, re replaying a whole bunch of other um, historical battle reenactments from a company, uh, the first company to really get successful at this, or should I say the biggest company out there that does this is Avalon Hill, okay? Um, and these guys, um, Avalon Hill makes a bunch of, you know, um, battle games, you know? So if you wanna play the Battle of Gettysburg, um, with little miniatures and stuff like that, you can totally check it out. If you want to play the Battle of Waterloo, yeah, you know, these guys make historical reenactment games. And, um, that's a really big thing. That's a really big thing that he was into way, way, way back in the day. So, um, of course, Avalon Hill has been, um, acquired, I guess you could say, by Wizards of the Coast, which is also Hasbro. It's a big thing right here. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at, because, yeah, that's a whole thing. Again, uh, here we go. Yeah, we're just looking. Fine, I agree. Uh, no, uh, uh, just uh, give me the cookies. I don't care. I'm done. Um, yeah, there's Avalon Hill, the game company. And, you know, they did things like Axes, Axes and Allies and things like that. And, um, you know, yeah, y'all might see Risk. Look at Risk. That's right. Risk is the sort of tabletop miniatures game that we're all in. But later on, Gygax and his buddies decided, you know what? Uh, we want to do something a little bit uh, more fantasy and uh, fewer figures, things like that. So they came up with a game called Chainmail. And Chainmail was essentially, they made little figures, uh, they got little figurines like wizards and fighters and stuff like that, and they wrote up rules and they published them in their local hobby magazines. One, two, skip a few, they came out with Dungeons and Dragons 1st Edition, and it was complicated and fun and all that stuff, but then they came out with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, and that was when stuff really kicked off. Um, I believe this was like in 1974. Um, there might be guys out there. I know that there are people out there that are willing to correct me and all that stuff. But again, this is just knowledge off the top of my head. I'm not looking anything up. That's how much I care about this stuff. Anyway, um, so uh, around the 70s, you know, um, dun Advanced Dungeons and Dragons became a thing. It became a thing. And it was one of the first things to introduce the polyhedral die set. Now, I know that's such a fancy word. I love fancy words because, again, ever since I was a child, I was rather loquacious. And um, that means I use a lot of 50 cent words. I'm looking for my standard set of polyhedrals. Um, my desk is atrocious. It's a shambles. Ah, here we go. I have a set of polyhedrals right here. These are polyhedral dice. Now, where I come from, in the ghetto, we know dice, or at least we think we know dice. We know six-sided dice. Look at these guys. Yeah, we know the six-siders, all right? Um, because craps is a real big game. But... What are those? What are all the, what the, a die with 20 sides? Are you kidding me? What, why would you need a 20? And what is this thing? All this is, is something for my mom to step on, this D4. We call them caltrops because that's what a caltrop is. But yeah, all this is, is something for my mom to step on, get mad at me about, and another reason for me to get my butt kicked. So, you know, but what's all that? And again, they came up with these multiple die things to play with numbers. So, uh, one, two, skip a few. Um, we hit the 1980s. Yay, I was a kid. All that stuff. And that was when um, the religious right took over in 1980 with the rise of Ronald Reagan. Now, this is important because this started something that is still prevalent, um, especially in the black community, um, called satanic panic. And what it comes down to is this. Um... Way, 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 way back 
when the church came up with the um, with the five cardinal virtues and the seven deadly sins um pretty much everything became an abomination in the eyes of god so everything is a sin it's a sin it's a sin it's a sin um and after a while the religious right the serious 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 conservative southern people that fell under the southern strategy um that didn't want to admit some of their less savory character quirks um one of the personality traits they tend to have is everything is evil if it's not the bible if it's not church then it's evil if it doesn't glorify god it is for satan so everything was terrible um and this was a big thing because this game dealt with two ma three major things that scares um the southern evangelical sex which are magic magic evil thou shalt not suffer a witch to live although let's face it if you read exodus moses was spell slinging left right and sideways um dice now dice are a weird one because in in the ghetto i said that we play a lot of craps okay but that's gambling gambling is a sin um primarily because a lot of poor people ended up gambling away stuff just like drinking is a sin but that don't stop that many people um in the church from being alcoholic but i'm not here to bash on the church all right um and thirdly monstrous imagery okay that is big now i always laughed at this very hard because i've read the bible covered cover quite a few times and one the monsters in the bible are awesome and second angels ain't exactly pretty so i couldn't quite get the whole idea of what makes these monsters more okay but these monsters not okay and of course some people from the church were like well no it's in the bible that's the word of god and besides the monsters that are in there are are, are they're evil and, and, and they're taken down by the forces of god and the magic that's there the forces of god and i'm just like okay all right i'm with you i'm with you on that but uh yeah in dungeons and dragons we play the good guys and we're slaying monsters to save people so what's the it's just the devil oh my lord 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 so i'm just i'm just sitting up going all right all right this is just um this is just a whole lack of misunderstanding and this is big because i talked about how my grandmother not my great grandmother that raised me but my grandmother that i didn't know very well um tried to convince my mom that i was possessed by demons after looking through one of my role-playing books <laughs> and i'm like i'm not possessed by a demon i exercised that thing five years ago now we just have lunch um but yeah so these are the big things and i'm here to dispel that number one and to let you guys know that D, D is something that i feel really needs to be integrated into um the disenfranchised community specifically the fiscally disenfranchised communities because um having grown up in south central i was lucky that i got a better education like i got the top education that south central had to offer and it was still only three quarters as good as my friends that grew up in the suburbs okay um and there are a lot of people out there on the internet that'll say things like people with my skin color inherently have lower iqs and i'm like dude i'm a genius I have the paperwork to back it up as to the state of california but my ability to process information does more harm than good when i don't have a lot of information to process or when the information that i am processing is detrimental to my growth so let's go through dungeons and dragons this is a role-playing game okay this is a game where you play a role now how do you do that people look at this book and they're like that's a game i don't see a board you talk about dice i don't see a board i don't see those figures i don't see all that stuff and i'm letting you know right now all that stuff by the time advanced dungeons and dragons had come out had become supplementary to playing the game so why do i think it should be in incorporated in the schools i will tell you all right 
the premise of playing an RPG, specifically Dungeons and Dragons, is simple. This book, The Player's Handbook, is one of the first textbooks in the series that outlines a world. Okay, it's an entire world that's built up. The world that has um, towns, cities, what's in the forest, and it has an ecosystem, flora, fauna, and what people do when they live there. So it's a completely built world. Now, we take that world and we write stories that take place in that world. Okay, so that's, that's the whole thing. It is creative writing without having to do world building. Now, this is huge for kids in junior high. Just huge, you know, because let's face it, when you're in school, there's a lot of stuff they're trying to teach you how to do. But they don't really teach. They tell you to do it under the premise of punishment if you do it incorrectly or if you don't do it at all. And there's no context. It's just do it. Do it and shut up. Do your homework. Write the story. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I grew up, as you guys know, in the ghetto. And I was afforded a better education than, oh, than my parents had. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot. I got to do a thing. So, what we are going to do here is uh, I'm going to entertain you guys with some beats. And uh, yeah, it's one of those, huh, did I leave the gas on? And the answer is, yes, I did. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a slideshow. And with that slideshow, I'm going to go take care of it thing real quick. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I'm in the Wizard's Tower by myself today. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was afforded a better education than the rest of my family because I qualified for special programs and things like that, which meant I ended up getting homework assignments that my family couldn't assist me with. I was literally on my own because um, there wasn't any tutoring programs in my neck of the woods and my family couldn't help me out. They just didn't know what I was studying, you know? So um, I spent a lot of time figuring stuff out for myself, okay? And by the time I got to college, I had to do a lot of creative, creative writing things. Now, Full disclosure, I was all about math and science. That made sense to me. Um, two was always two. Um, and when it wasn't two, I had very clear rules to know when it wasn't. Okay. Um, it was a negative times a negative equals a positive. That's just the way things go. Shut up. Except that. And two will always be an even number. 
two times whatever will always be an even number. There was never I before E except after C. And when sounding like A is in neighbor and way and on weekends and holidays and all through Maine, you'll always be wrong no matter what you say. It was never one of those things, you know. Um, it was numbers were numbers and they were reliable. And I needed that kind of stability. So when it came to reading, I read all the time. And I always spoke eloquently. Yes, I was an eloquent speaker with a loquacious um, flavoring and an extenuous vocabulary. And um, doing anything in an extemporaneous manner was always simple. However, I couldn't write very well. My brain was going so fast, I could never actually put down on paper the stuff I was thinking about. And my teachers, always wrote it off as lazy. You were just lazy, you don't have enough interest. And it was, no, I just wasn't understanding the lesson. And I was having a hard time applying things. I know I've had two teachers in my life that at the end of the day, I just did not like. One was my first grade teacher and one was my sixth and eighth grade English teacher. Um, he was a decent guy, I'm not gonna lie. Mr. Davis was a good guy. Um, but he didn't quite understand how a kid as smart as I, I was, didn't have the same passions, uh, the same passion and enjoyment of the stuff that he felt. He just, he had a hard time identifying with his students on an emotional level. Um, so it was, it was an interesting thing. You know, if ever I come across him again, I'd like to take him out for a cup of coffee or something. But, um, but yeah, the whole creative writing thing, it just wasn't really my thing. Um, so where does D&D &D come in? You might ask. Well, it's simple. In Dungeons and Dragons, you have two types of players, two components of players. You have your dungeon master and you have your players. So this is the way it goes. The book in itself has the world. So imagine your favorite movie series, okay? Ma uh, matter of fact, no, let's take this in the comic books. Imagine the Marvel Universe exists, okay? And the dungeon master is the person that wants to write a story that takes place in the Marvel Universe. And the players get to create their own superheroes. The caveat is in the beginning, um, the heroes that you make are just starting out. Okay, so uh, you want to make a, you know, you want to do like a superhero story and you want to set it in the Marvel Universe and you write up an outline, you know, um, outline being what is the overall plot? We already know the setting. And what's the story that you want to tell? What are the big beats? What are the major things that got to happen? Now, your friends create characters. And then your friends take those characters, they sit around a table, and you tell them what's happening in the story, and they decide what their characters are going to do within the story. And hopefully everybody comes together for an awesome time and some awesome stories at the end. It's that simple. But the rules are kind of complex. Okay, The rules themselves are kind of complex when it comes to that. But when I was really, really, really into D&D, &D, I noticed that once I was able to discern that that's what I was doing, my grades in my English classes went way up in college because I understood the concept of setting, genre, tone, mood, and pacing. And I'm just like, oh, well, that's a thing. And this was something that my suburban and white friends who had been playing um, consistently already knew. They just, they just knew that. So here I was playing catch up and I'm like, nah, bruh, nah, I got to take this to the other kids that don't, um, have it like I do. So yeah, it, it's one of those things. Um, so let's get in 
to 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now, why is it 5th edition? Because it is the 5th rewrite of advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Um, there have been other editions. There have been other editions. The biggest edition in my adulthood was 3rd edition. That was when the game became a lot more mainstream. And um, they they took out some of the stuff from the older editions that made the game hard because you know they're business and they got to have new players because new players keep the business alive because they're new customers so that's where the thing goes because as i've said on this show a hundred times before um you only need to buy an rpg once and then you're good for as long as as the book stays together and in a world that has duct tape at the 99 cent store you can keep them pages in the book for a long time um and then when they update the editions that's another purchase but you can play the old stuff and you can play the new stuff so it, it it's really it's definitely a lifetime investment and this is a big thing because this book for a casual DD player is all you need right here if you're not going to be a hardcore this is all you need this is it this is it but this is fifty dollars and fifty dollars is fifty dollars it's a lot to some people it's not a lot to others there are two other books um such as the monster manual and the dungeon master's guide that help expand the goodness of the game but those are fifty dollars each too now if you're really gonna make this your hobby, I recommend spending the $150 and then you're good for the next 30 years outside of pencils and paper. Okay, that, that's, that's all you need, that's it. Everything else takes place here. And all the other stuff that we do are just complimentary to these things. So that's a big thing. Now, some folks might be here today because they want to learn how to play. So we're going to go into that, okay? Um, you say a person writes an outline to the story, blah, 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 and then you make your character. How do we do that? Well, the first thing you got to do is think. If I was in a fantasy setting, like Lord of the Rings, for example, I'm pretty sure most of us have heard of those movies. You know, I don't know. See, back in my day, there were these little rectangular objects called books. And uh, yeah, they, they took a little effort on our parts. All right, that's enough bitter old man as I'm being. And um, this these are the super duper basics. And we'll get into a little bit of fifth edition and um, and with them and with those basics, um, I'm going to address a couple of things. All right. So. Um, the major things, the three things that you'll hear any D and D player say when they talk about once I had a character and he was a alignment race and class. Okay. That's it. Let's talk about the races or as I like to call them species. Um, the first, oh wait, sorry. I was in the wrong one. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. There we go. Um, one right there um yeah so our major races that we have are the basic fantasy races all right so let's take a look we've got our dwarves our dwarves are awesome they are stout they are strong they are headstrong they live in places covered in rock like hills and mountains um, they're short, they're strong. If you call them a midget, they'll probably break your back. Moving on, we got elves. They are pointy eared, super beautiful, super old things that kind of are better at everything, but that's only because they don't really become adventurers. They don't leave, they don't really leave the house until they're like 120 years old. So they've spent that long practicing anything that they want to set their mind to. Next off, gnomes. Now you might be thinking David the gnome. I know I might be thinking David the gnome, but no, these aren't the little dudes in the pointy hats. You know, thing is these guys are small. <laughs> They're small. They're just tiny little people. They're good at making stuff. They're good at fixing things. Um, if you grew up reading folk tales like I did, you know, like the gnomes that, um, 
that live in the walls of the shoemaker shop and they come out and they fix stuff but some of the stuff they fix are weapons and then they fix people with their weapons with violence that's one of the things that they're good at moving on we got the half elven half elven you say yeah well sometimes humans get attracted to those really pretty fleet-footed things um an example of an elf that you guys have probably heard of is legolas you know um or the god i forgot her name i think it was tariel um from the hobbit movies so you know sometimes they hook up with people and their children are the best of both worlds moving on we got halflings these are hobbits they like drinking they like eating good meals and they are incredible thieves incredible thieves because they're so small um they can get in and out of places really good they can hide really well and they're really good at fighting dirty <laughs> You know, next we've got the half orcs, but we'll talk about them in a minute. Of course, we've got the humans, regular old people. Now, a lot of people might ask, why would I play a human in a fantasy setting? Like, I've got all these options. Why would I want to be a person? Because people are awesome. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, each of these races get certain bonuses to a lot of the stuff that they can do. But there ain't nothing wrong with just wanting to be a person in this setting. You know, I mean, it, it's really one of those things. Um, moving on. We've got the tiefling. They look like devils, but they're not. They're not. Well, not exactly. Um, they're descendant of devils, and that don't mean that they're bad. Okay, that's just how they were born. They were born that way. And, of course, we got the dragonborn. Dragonborn. They're descendant of dragons. They're lizard people. And they're awesome. And each one of them um, is a descendant of a certain color dragon, which means they get a breath weapon. So some can breathe fire, some can breathe acid, some can even breathe electricity. It's, it's a thing that they can do. Um, and honestly, these things are, um, these are the races that you can play. Now, whatever race you end up choosing, um, has very little to do with your alignment. Now, I talked about the half orc. Um, orcs are known as monsters, and sometimes they take people as slaves. As, that's just what happens. And then, you know, they kind of pull a Thomas Jefferson and you get a half breed. That's just how it goes. Um, but this game is very, very clear. Your species or your race does not determine the content of your character. Oh yeah, that's a terrible message to tell people, right? Just because you were born a certain way, that don't mean that you're good, don't mean that you're bad, it just means that you might have pointy ears or you might be short. It's that simple. That's all. That that that's it. Oh yeah, that's all. Um in this game we have something called alignment. And um alignment is simple. Alignment is your actual moral character. Okay? This is this gives the content of your character. There are three categories, good, neutral, evil, and chaotic, neutral, and lawful. Mix them together and you get the kind of person, um, um, kind of person that, um, you are as far as your, um, as far as what your, um, what your personality is like um there are lots of little memes and stuff and little pictures that you can pull out on um on google i there i i have so many different ones but i like the cartoon ones so what i'm gonna do is pull up this one and this is the cartoon dad alignment chart and let's take a look real quick at cartoon dads. So over here in the top left, you've got the good, the best of the best. You've got Mufasa. He is lawful good. Um, look inside yourself, Simba. You are more than what you have become. You know, on the bad side, you've got this dude. I don't even know who that is because I'm not all that stuff. But yeah, um, should have had the dude from Full Metal Alchemist. And of course, in the middle, you've got, I just live here. That is like the total absentee father. Um, but yeah, you've got lawful good, lawful neutral, 
and lawful evil, i.e., I'm evil, but there's a code. They're evil lawmakers. Think politicians. Neutral good. Uncle Iroh! Um, they are... What, what's the term? They like to be balanced, but they lean toward good. Then you've got neutral. Uh, true neutral with I'm just dad. Um, and neutral evil, <laughs> which is they really don't care, but when they do stuff, it's terrible. Then you got chaotic good. Pick a row! Pick a row! Um, <laughs> um, these are the dudes that go for the best result possible but they tend to be more destructive than others and they break a lot of rules um chaotic neutral ah wrong one yeah chaotic neutral um y'all you know um you get this dad that's like we have a son i didn't know that and of course chaotic evil they're just bad they literally are like the joker okay this is this is a big thing all right so that's a thing now ah you guys shouldn't have seen that anyway um cool onward yeah that, that's kind of fun so um the next thing that we have is our class and that's our job okay so let me explain what the alignments are you have a human let's say you're a human and you want to make them just an upstanding citizen, a very Superman type or Captain America type, then you're looking at a lawful good human. And if you want to make them just an evil baby killing uh, murder hobo who curb stomps kids, that would be chaotic evil. And each player can choose depending on whether or not the person taking the position of the GM will let them. Like when I run campaigns, I don't tell them what they can be or can't be, but I always hope for the good array because I like running games for good guys and people that want to be heroes. And um, But if they want to be villains, then they get to be villains. I mean, it, it's that kind of thing. It's just my my particular plots all about consequences so that is a big thing um the next bit are your character classes what do they do for a living we're going to go through these really quickly because we're kind of running out of time first off we've got our cleric now our cleric is very simple they are warriors yeah they are warriors of god or whatever gods they have, uh, whatever gods they worship, they fight for that god. So if it's a good god, then they make evil stop being evil with their fists. And they're really good at healing people, at counseling people. They're essentially priests who know how to fight. That's pretty awesome. Um, next we have the druid. Druids are awesome. They commune with nature. They come in two flavors. Flora or fauna, or rather plant or animal. <laughs> it's that simple. They live in the woods, they talk to plants, they talk to animals, and some of them can become animals, some of them can control animals. So if you got a lot of pets, you might like this class. Next is the fighter. That's it. What do I do? I fight. I beat stuff up. That is what I do. Okay? I like fighting. Um, and that is my whole thing. These people can be bodyguards, security guards, um, you know, guardsmen, cops, um, um, mercenaries, you know, I mean, that's what they do. Um, that is the whole thing. Look at me. I got a sword. I hit stuff. That is what I'm good at. They don't sling magic. They don't have prayers. They tend to just be really good at beating stuff up. And there is a place for that within narratives. Next, we've got the monk. Um, everything like there's a reason I pulled up Goku. Um, they have key points. They do a whole lot of fighting. They don't use weapons. They throw Kamehameha's and they do the magic martial arts. Moving on, we've got the Paladins. Now the Paladins are they're like clerics, but they're closer to the fighting knights than they are to the priests. So they're the ones that use swords. Um, think about things like actual soldiers like really high-ranking soldiers um knights you know we're knights of the round table we fight we fight until we're able you know kind of thing and um these guys take oaths 
They're like, I made a promise to do this and this is what I'm dedicating my life to. So it really is a matter of the character class that said, I'm going to be like this. This is what I'm dedicating my life to. Um, the paladins in your lives tend to be teachers, um, counselors, social workers, doctors, that kind of thing. And they take an oath. They stick to that oath regardless of the cost. And these guys are really good. They're really good. And they hit really hard. They're very good at one-on-one -on -one combat. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually playing Paladin in the 1 5th edition game I'm in right now. And I'm playing him so saccharinely good that it's really making my other players think that I'm going to have a huge heal turn. But um, these guys don't necessarily have to be lawful good. They used to, but in 5th edition, not anymore. It's more about the oath than it is about the god. Next off, we got the rangers. These are the fighting dudes that live in the forest. They are awesome. Okay, 5th edition had a lot of complaints about them when they first came up, but just the whole idea of, dude, I'm a ranger. I live in the woods. I have a cool little cave. I know how to hunt. I know how to kill and cook my own food. <clears throat> I know which plants are edible. I have an animal companion that can help me out. Sometimes it's a bird of prey. Sometimes it's a wolf. Sometimes it's a bear. But I live in the forest. I do my thing. And these guys are amazing archers. You know, these guys are sort of you can run, but you'll die tired kind of characters. Um, Legolas from Lord of the Rings was a ranger, as was Aragorn. So just think about that. Um, yeah, these guys, really awesome, good at camouflage in the forest. And of course, the rogue. Yep, the rogue. Now, that, these guys, they are the thieves, the con men, the assassins. They're the ones that are like, what? What, what? There's reason I picked this guy for the rogue. I could have picked Lando, but I wanted to be more universal, and everybody knows, you know, Han Solo. Um, Han Solo, believe it or not, is a fantastic character of a cha uh, fantastic example of a chaotic good character because I was born in the 70s, excuse me, so he shot first. Um, and it is, they're out for themselves, they're out for that money, but they do um, take care of their friends and they're, they're really good at sneaking around, really good at picking locks, really good at picking pockets. Um, and now we go into our major magic slinging classes. Now clerics have, have, clerics and paladins have prayers and auras, okay? And their prayers can do a lot of cool stuff, especially against demons and against the undead. Oh yeah, this game is satanic, right? Um... But yeah, now we get into the Sorcerer. These are people that were born with innate magical powers. They didn't study. They didn't make a deal. They were just born with it. Yeah, it ain't Maybelline. They're just born with it. All right. And um, they get some really cool magical spells and they can customize them to really hit their flavor. And this was Dungeons and Dragons way of kind of making it so you could play a superhero um because you can play an x-man you know um if you were going to make any of the x-men specifically ones like Iceman or emma frost or something like that they would be sorcerers they were born with an ability um they were born with a certain set of spells certain set of skills and they can use meta magic to flavor those skills to fit themselves so that is a big thing um followed by the warlock these are the folks that get magical powers because they made a deal they made a deal sometimes with a demon sometimes with an otherworldly eldritch horror sometimes with angels sometimes with fairies but they made a deal um they serve a certain thing and that thing gives them certain magical powers um again none of this says you gotta be evil um you know, according to these rules, and this is to address that satanic panic thing, sorry to tell you, but according to the rules of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, Moses was a warlock. He made a deal with God. God did stuff for him. There you go. I mean, that, that was the whole thing. Turning water into wine and the rock, oh no, sorry, um, 
Water and the Wine. No, that was that that was the other dude. Uh, one that came later. Now, um, part in the Red Sea, making his staff eat up the other staffs after turning into snakes, things like that. You know, because he made a deal, and it was all right. No, I got you on this. All right, so that that's another one thing. And then finally, the wizard. <laughs> The wizard are people that have a little bit of an innate magical quality, but they study. They study hard. They study hard. They practice a lot. And one of the reasons that in most stories, wizards are old is because wizard comes from the word wizened, as in the wise. Okay, And young people ain't wise, generally in fiction. Um, so... Um, and they have a whole bunch of magic spells that they can study and sling and all that stuff. And um, that's essentially the whole thing. So a person would pick their character, their class, and their alignment. Or their race, their class, their alignment. So I want to be a um, neutral good elven ranger. Boom. That would be it. You know, um, alignment, neutral good. I tend to lean toward good, and other than that, I keep to myself. Elven, yeah, I got pointy ears, and I'm 130 years old. Um, and ranger, I live in the woods, I do bow and arrow stuff, I'm good at hunting, I'm good at tracking, and I have an animal pet. You know? Um, and these are the basics. You know, these are the very, very, very basics. And what do they do? They get together, they adventure, they go treasure hunting, and they go killing monsters. Now, you guys have seen a lot of things that are based on Dungeons and Dragons, even in modern media, okay? Um, specifically video games. Every single game set in Morrowind is a Dungeons and Dragons game as a video game. Every single one. So we're talking Morrowind, Oblivion, um, all the Baldur's Gate games. Baldur's Gate is the world setting of Dungeons and Dragons. And of course, um, we've got the late 90s, early 2000s games of like Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, Planescape Torment, um, just a whole lot of those things. And once you have your character and your class, class and your alignment, there are other game mechanics that come down to everything. And, um, but you keep all this stuff on a character sheet, okay? Now, on your character sheet, you have your character's name, your class level. Oh, that is great. Love these fillable PDFs. And, uh, you know, your race, your background, blah, 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 all that jazz. And that is the big thing that you got. Now, what makes this game different is, um, is you've got your six stats. And they have something in the game called an array. You put numbers in the stats. Those numbers give you a certain bonus numbers. And once you understand all of the little math that goes down, all you'll need is this. That's it. One 20 sided die. Well, technically, you'll need one full dice set. Now, I'm a big fan of the full dice set. But this is the thing that you're going to be rolling the most the 20 sided die. Um. They fixed a lot of things when it comes to this to make it very, very simple. And I'm going to walk you guys through it right there. Um, these things here, these are your saving throws, which are essentially dodge rolls that have to do with this. These are your skills. Okay. Um, this little dot means you have it or you don't. And each skill is set on an ability. So acrobatics is set with your dexterity. Um, if you have a number, say 16. Ooh, no, not 156. That would be awesome. 15. Let's see. 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. Um, right here would be a plus two. And if you have this, boom. Now, between levels one... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Between levels one and five, your proficiency bonus is plus two. So what does that mean? That means if you want to do a backflip, I would say make an acrobatics roll. And it's very simple. You would take your acrobatics. Do you have it? Yes, you do. So you would add the proficiency bonus plus two and your dexterity bonus plus two. And then you roll a 20 sided die. 
That's it. That's all. You add your skill bonus to your dex bonus, or your your skill bonus to your ability bonus, roll a 20-sided die. That's the system. Um, average difficulty is 11. So with this system, it's super easy. And this is why it's taken me so long. So if you want to do a backflip over a table, you would take your acrobatics, which gives you a plus two, your dexterity, which gives you a plus two. You start at four. Okay, you start at four. If I have it set in my mind that difficulty is 13, well, you start with four. What do you have to roll on a 20 sided die? The answer is nine. This roll was a 19. So 19 plus four is 24. All he needed was um, 13. They did it. It was that simple. Okay, and that's how most of the things go. Now, the proficiency bonuses are fixed in the game. Um, the bonuses for your skills are fixed in the game. This is so that new players can hurry up and get their characters done and call it a day. That is the number one thing that they're trying to do. They're trying to get everything fixed. They're trying to call it all a day. And that right there is the end of it. That's all. Why? Because we're there to play a game, to play pretend and come up with a good story, not there to do a bunch of math all day. All right. And um, yeah, that whole thing is super demonic. Yeah. Doing basic mathematics at a random pace and doing a bunch of creative writing. Yeah, that's the devil, you know, and that that's really what it comes down to. Now, the reason that we have figures is because, of course, you fight things. Excuse me. And when you're fighting things, it's cool to have little toys, but you don't need them. Okay. Um, a dungeon master or whoever's running the game, dungeon master, game master, storyteller, dungeon keeper, regardless of what game you're playing. In Dungeons and Dragons, it's called the dungeon master. Um, they take the role of everything else. So when you're fighting a monster, okay, when you when you need to fight a monster, I'm a monster. Rawr, the dungeon master has all of the stats for the monster i.e this is the character sheet for a player the dungeon master has the character sheet for the monster or the bad guy and you essentially play against each other that's it and the cool thing is is everybody at the table is trying to beat the bad guy now sometimes the bad guy is single sometimes the bad guy comes in a group sometimes the bad guy is a big monster you know sometimes it is sometimes it's a giant spider sometimes it's 11 giant spiders you know and the players get to do their fighting but dungeons and dragons was the first role-playing game out there and a role-playing game gives you the opportunity of interactive storytelling in a different way from a video game and this is why a video game is stuck to whatever the programmers have the technology to achieve and the money to put forth. Um, I talk a lot about Fallout because that's the game I watch and that has some of the best role playing I've seen in a video game. I.e. when you talk to someone, there's a whole dialogue tree that they go through. That game took billions of dollars to make. Um, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, those are billions of dollars to create. But you're still limited in what your choices are. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, you don't gotta fight. You don't gotta talk to the people. Um, I'm sure if you've ever played um, an interactive video game, sometimes there are people that you wanna punch in the face, but you just can't because it's not programmed into the game. In Dungeons and Dragons, you can. Um, sometimes when you're in a boss battle, like let's say with Dark Souls, you can't run away. In Dungeons and Dragons, you probably can. You know, so the fifth edition rules are far simpler than everything else. And it's really good to get people into the game. Now, before I get out of here today, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Okay. Fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons versus Pathfinder. 
I will tell you guys this right off the bat. I don't think that there's a competition. I really don't. Um, Pathfinder is closer to Dungeons and Dragons um, 3.5 edition. Okay. Um, it's far more granular. Um, and this is what I mean by that. In Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 edition, or sorry, in 5th edition, you have a skill. Okay, and this is just an example. But here, you have the skill Athletics. Athletics covers everything from running, jumping, climbing trees, swimming, um, anything that would be athletic. In Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, there was a skill for each of those actions. There was a running skill. There was a jumping skill. There was a climb skill. There was a um, survival was broken down to hunting, tracking, use ropes, set traps. You, you see what I mean? Just every little thing. And you would have to spend your character points in order to put numbers in those categories. And if you didn't have the numbers, then you were penalized, i.e. you would suffer a negative penalty to your role. Fifth edition took out negative penalties and they roll on a system called advantage or disadvantage. If you're really, 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 really good, you get to roll two d20s and you get to keep the highest. If you're at a point of advantage, if you should have this, if there's no reason you should fail this, you roll at advantage. Because there's still a chance you might be having an off day. Um, and if you are seriously against the wall and you're pulling a Hail, a Hail Mary and you have no help, um, you roll at disadvantage, which is roll two of those d20s and take the lowest one. So on advantage, if you roll a 20 and a 1, you take the 20. On disadvantage, if you roll a 20 and a 1, you take the 1. And that's it. That That's the whole thing. Where the other um, Pathfinder was, well, you can always try, but if you try, you'll get a negative penalty for having this and a negative penalty for having that. So you would normally have a bonus of a D20 plus like four, but because you lack the requisite skills and it's a storm and it's dark, um, it's a minus seven. So you had a plus five. So now you're rolling at a negative two. Two. So it's whatever you roll on the d20 die minus two. Um, and for older gamers, that's how we grew up. That Those were all the maths and the calculations that we had to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the game that you want to play, that's awesome. Um, I'm, well, I'm not going to say there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing morally wrong with that. Okay. Um, the difficulty comes in in... It takes longer to play the game, longer to prepare the game, longer to think of scenarios. So if this is the only hobby that you have, then yeah, Pathfinder, which is the game that continued where 3.5 changed to fourth edition, and it went in a direction that hardly anyone, hardly anyone liked. Um, so the people that still like 3.5, they went to Pathfinder. And if that is what you like, by all means, do it. If that is the way that you want to game, and if you have the time for it, then go for it. Um, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition has a much less steep learning curve. So it's really good for new players that just want to play. It's good for people that have a 40 hour a week job that has them doing 15 hours a week overtime. So if you want to sit down with the game, put it together and play, that's great. That's, that's what you got. That's perfect. That is amazing. That is something that we can make work. Um, if you've got more time than that, then go 3.5. So I per, or not 3.5, go Pathfinder. So the truth is, I don't think that one is better inherently than another. In my experience, in my experience, the quality of a role-playing game comes down to the dungeon master when you're playing. As a dungeon master, the quality of the system 
is based on what you're leaving in and what you're leaving out. It's really that simple. Um, I run an Espergenesis game and in Espergenesis, um, it's all these same rules as fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, but it's set in space and it's got space monsters and space travel. Um, I like the space travel rules, but I prefer to use um, the space combat movement um, trackers from Star Trek Attack Wing slash um, Star Wars X-Wing because that's set up for dogfighting. And when I think of like an epic space battle, I think more Colonial Vipers and X-Wings and things like that than I do capital ship combat, okay? I, I, don't, I don't think slow boats, I think fast fighters, you know? Um, and that helps keep the pace of the game going. Um, and I worked out a system um, to work that going. And my players know I made this part up. I could use the standard space rules, but I don't have to. Um, so yeah, so the elephant in the room, a lot of Pathfinder players don't like 5th edition and they will decry it. Um, a lot of 5th edition players don't like Pathfinders and they will decry that. I'm saying if you don't like it because it's new and it's simpler, put it back in the deck. Okay, there are people out there that like it. Like I said, every game is someone's first game. And if a person likes the system, they like the system. If they don't like the system, they don't like the system. So it really is one of them things. So that is where we're sitting with that. So that is an overview of the history and the, um, the basic play of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we can get into the ins and outs of each character class the ins and outs of each race but that will take a long time there are great videos on youtube that already do all that stuff but if you guys want to hear it from me um let me know but uh guess what that's our time for the day <laughs> isn't that fun and if you guys are wondering what i think of fifth edition dungeons and dragons i give this game a flush okay boom I totally give this game a flush because um, I run a company, so I don't have a lot of time um, to do a lot of calculations and to fight with people over, over all that stuff, especially when I'm running the games. I like to go, we're talking about this, we're doing it this way, boom, 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 and it's done. That's that's where I'm at. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of where I sit with that, and I'm a fan on that jazz. So, um, I want to thank you guys over in NP City. Thanks, chat. Thank you guys. What's going on? And, um, yeah, so if you guys want me to go a little deeper on, um, you know, you guys want me to go a little deeper onto Dungeons and Dragons, you know, you guys want me to, like, really, really delve into it, send me an email and let me know. How do you send me an email, you ask? Well, that's simple. Just send me an email at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, check us out. Leave a comment on the YouTube thing. If you guys are watching on YouTube, hey, what's up? I love you. I love you lots. Um, you know, leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a share. Give us a subscription. Get other people to subscribe. We really need the numbers bolstered, and we're trying to make a community where people are welcome. Ha ha. The only thing we have intolerance for is intolerance. So, yeah, that's where we're sitting on that uh look us up on soundcloud that would be awesome um and of course follow us on our social medias on the twitters and the instagrams um if you guys have the time and you've got the means and you think that what we do here is cooler than a coffee refill then all you gotta do is hit us up if you will at um wait oh there we are boom yeah, just hit us up at uh, ooh patreon.com slash bid underscore p. Become a patron, and we'll talk. To, we'll talk to you and all that stuff. And that is the only way um, to guarantee that I cover a game or a topic and stuff like that. Especially if you're on the royalty tiers, like Queen Shannon Boom Boom Lay, His Majesty Paul Mansfield, and of course, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. So, thank you guys for joining me in the game gallery today. Yep, 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 yep. And 
um just look us up drop us an email do all that jazz and remember if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth be it race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic sorcerer sin thank you guys for joining me in the game gallery